well after the time-oriented one or goal-based metrics. So I believe it's on page six of the packet. That's where it's being viewed right now. It's essentially after the year ends. So after December, yeah. So there are other goals and objectives that aren't strictly on time based intervals, but they're more goal based where it's a long running project and there are, I guess, milestones that indicate where progress is being made. So the second section is for those types of goals and objectives. And if we use the media outreach campaign as the, the example, which is shown first, this is just where milestones would be determined and then staff can just on the, the column on the, the right most column that's empty, just enter in a description, short descriptions of the status as, as events take place. So again, this, this would cover almost the entirety of all of the specifics in the appendix of the five-year management plan that specify the means of achievement and the, um, I guess the actual metrics, yeah, the, the, the evaluation metrics. So this is a proposal for a format to do that where this, um, I think the next, this has been provided to um, Tom, the, near the end of this past year, and it's just awaiting discussion with staff for review and input, but this essentially in a, in a proposal state is what I would say it is. So, so that said, I think any, any input on its format or its content or alternatives are absolutely welcome, but this is what the, the committee came up with as a, a, best, a best outcome or a best option for providing a means for the district and its staff to be able to easily report back information on the five-year management plan progress. Thank you, Joe. Um, Tom, do you want to add anything? And then we can open it up for discussion. Uh, no, I, as I indicated at the meeting that, you know, this this, uh, this kind of stalled uh, with me, um, uh, but it, it is something that, that uh, you know, this, this, I, I have had provided input to the CAC on, um, and uh, do need to uh, to take that and uh, you know go to the um, and obviously as Joe mentioned the waste reduction specialist would uh, you know probably be uh, one of the key, uh, primary users of the document but there will be other staff members that would be uh, addressing some of the other goals and objectives that are listed and work with that staff or work with those staff members to get their thoughts and their input and, uh, you know, try to come up with a final document that uh, that staff's comfortable working with that would give uh, the CAC and the board uh, the kind of progress and information that they're looking for. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question about the colors. Uh, so green, blue, purple. It's just the first one in each category that has that color heading. Is that right? Correct, yes. So it's just a visual guide where the green, they're all coded by the four main categories. So education, source reduction, um, waste diversion, and then to minimize, I guess, yeah, uh, it's not uh, an essential element, but just when there are more than one goal under a given category, it's just the first first goal of that category that has the color indicator. Gotcha. All right, well, um, let's open the floor for any feedback on this, um, on this uh, uh, reporting mechanism, these forms. Jeff, go ahead. Thanks. Um, can you go to uh, June, please? Just scroll up a little bit. Yeah, thanks. I just want to make sure I understand under semi-annual. Um, so WD number two is 12 per quarter is the goal, but it's reported on a semi-annual basis. That's a good point. Let me take a note of that. And then the one below it doesn't seem to have a goal at all either. That would be same, same with WD one on, uh... and, and with, without you know, looking at everything, I, when you if um, and then we can look when we get into the reviewing the the plan itself. But you know, uh, there's an appendix uh, appendices uh, in the solid waste management plan, uh, and and not all goals and objectives necessarily have um, 
I guess, measurable um, metrics associated with them, if I'm remembering correctly. And it is possible that uh, that those lines in there that don't have uh, those numbers out to the right, it, it's possibly because it's not uh, identified uh, in the appendices of the in the goals and matrices. Does that sound right, Joe? Yes, that is absolutely correct. And um, actually, so the goal number three that has no uh, numeric metric associated with it just says report on results from outreach efforts biannually. So that's why there's just the report field on the right. Uh, I guess the, the blank cell would be where a written remark would be made rather than a, a numerical count added. And with respect to the, the previous goal, um, it, it should indeed, I think, be. I think the 12 for you was a copy paste carryover. Okay, got it. No problem. Um, Penny. Comment? Yeah, I just wanted to say, I think it would be good to have uh, staff, Tom and staff, try this for a month and then give us feedback. That makes sense. But I really appreciate all the effort that went into doing this also. This is amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. It seems like it would pretty easily be able to be then put into a dashboard form if that's what you wanted. <laughs> I like it. Um, I have a question. Um, where is goal SR number three, the local government outreach? So that is a good question. If I'm thinking of the right one, is it missing from the appendix or no. from the reporting? It's in the appendix. Okay. Local political engagement under source reduction, but I didn't see it. I only see number two. Is it possible it was in the appendix but didn't make it into the actual plan? So there, there was one item that for which that's the case. Um, pulling up my notes here. <laughs> it's in there, it's in the plan. Local political engagement, yeah, it's there under source redu uh, source reduction number four in the plan itself. And um, another thing is that uh, it goes from goal number two to goal number four. So number four should really be number three. <laughs> I had already changed it in my notes. The plan. Right. That's something we missed, I guess. In the first. December. Wait, where is that? December. Well, and if you look at our actual plan under source reduction, we have goal one, two, and four. So <laughs> there is much. actually a goal number three in the plan. Yeah, I was going to say, I do see it in the plan. It somehow did not get included in the plan. So the gap in the oh. plan is an actual... So there's a description on that goal. It is missing from the appendix. They should clarify. Correct. It's no, yeah. missing from the. It's, yeah. it's not here on the. Yeah, the plan itself has short paragraph descriptions. Um, let me check on the page. Okay. I apologize for the lack yeah. of clarity. Yeah. On oh. Ongoing dialogue with major state, major community stakeholders. It is listed in the Correct. plan, just not in the appendix. Gotcha. So we're looking for this. And generally yes the appendix yeah okay has all, all right. of the all of the um all right evaluation metrics so we just need to do a, a crosswalk to make sure everything maps between the two between the appendix and the plan itself
So yeah, source reduction goal number three that is absent in the appendix, but is present in the plans uh, paragraph descriptions in the preceding section. Okay. So I assume we don't have any something more specific goals for that, like a timetable or anything. I actually, let me pull up the draft as well, because it was included in a, a draft document earlier. Pull up those values as well. Reduction goal number three, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So it did have um, actually, Tom, do I have the ability to share or is it possible to provide it? Uh, or is that not in your control? That is. I don't know yeah. that I have the ability to do that. Um, okay. Uh, to be able to share from your laptop, uh, Joseph, uh, you'll yes. need to accept the promotion of panelist. There it is. Okay. I thought I already had, and I just saw it reappear. It maybe buried it in my windows. Beautiful. Thank you. Share. This is goal number three. And, um, I'm going down with the major community stakeholders. So there are metrics for that as well. And they are. Maintain a recurring check in cycle. So you need to nod you at least three times per year to summarize the results of the check in meetings. So I think we can touch on that at the at a future, the next agenda item about making uh, amendments to the existing management plan. That'd be something that would be <laughs> good to add into it or to make up for its, its absence. Yes, yes, we should officially. Can we? I mean, can we revise the plan to put this back in because it was an oversight that it was omitted, Tom? Uh, I would have to go back and look um, exactly at, you know, at the resolution that adopted uh, the plan. Um, and and so if, I mean, was it, it was it an, an oversight? Was it meant to be adopted and an oversight in the published adopted copy, or was it not presented? Uh, with what was to be adopted. Um, now, so I have to look at that. Um, but I mean, and again, we can't do anything final at, at this meeting, but of course, you know, the board would always have the option to consider revisions to the plan at any point they wish. Okay, so that answers the question. And when we do have a regular board meeting with a quorum, we could, we could make any amendments we want, is what you're saying. Yes. Feedback on the reporting forms. You want the reporting form up again? Yes, let's do if you wouldn't mind, Tom. Any section in particular? Not for me. Welcome. Anyone else is welcome to seek to a section, though. I'll just say I like the format, and we just want to go back and make sure that everything agrees, the appendix, the plan, and the metric reporting sheet all, all agree. But I think this is great. And I think that they do. I, I think that the CAC took, you know, the appendix from from the adopted plan, and we'll look at what happened to that uh, source reduction goal and whether that was inadvertently admitted or not. But uh, so, but I mean that. I mean, and somebody on CAC can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's basically they went down through that appendices and took the the measurables that were there and developed this form. So it should all be there. 
That is correct, but just given the, the nature of humanity, I think it's worth a second pair of eyes to make sure there weren't any omissions or duplications. Certainly. So do we have a volunteer second pair of eyes to do that? I, I, th I think I, I can do that because I, I like I said this is this is still something that's kind of sitting in my lap that I need to uh, review with uh, the uh, the affected staff members and as a part of that review we can double check all of that. Excellent. Great. Well, I will just uh, join my colleagues in thanking Joe and the CAC members who created this. this is a lot of work. Um, it is much more detailed than any reporting that I that I have seen. Um, but uh, I agree with Penny that we should give it a try. If it becomes too onerous, we can maybe reduce it to just quarterly or um, you know. that sounds great. Yeah. I guess I, I would just I would throw out with you know uh, the pending onboarding or get starting of the waste reduction specialist scheduled for the beginning of March. Um, it, it might make sense to, you know, wait until she gets on board and gets her hands on it um, before we really, uh, you know, make an assessment of, you know, whether or not it's a workable form. Fair enough. So so are you envisioning, Tom, that she would um, complete this for the first time at the end of March or at the end of April? Um, I don't know. I, I, I would want to get her in and, and get her where she feels comfortable and, and see how fast she takes off with things. Yes. I, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to put too high or too low of expectations, um, you know, before she's even walked in the door. Well, I guess it would be ideal if it was done at the latest for the month of April. I would agree. Okay. And, uh, but I, I think that uh, the end of March might be pushing it given given the fact that she she's going to be there one week and then I'm going to be off for spring break um and we'll see we'll see you know where she is uh at the end of that week and how comfortable she is and, and what she can do um you know on her own that week I'm gone okay yeah that's totally reasonable any other comments or questions on the reporting forms? No, please. I do have a comment, yeah, if I may. Um, I just wanted to also add that one thing we had discussed during the subcommittee meetings was an interest in getting staff feedback on what they think of the, the format and the frequency as well. Make sure that it, it, it is something that works well for them and not just something to, to push to say, fill this out, but to make it work the best for all of them. That's really the goal of the document to really make the reporting process easy. So getting input on how easy that is, is important to us as well. Yeah, and that's and that's what I was, uh, I guess, alluding to when I said we could be that second set of eyes, that second review on it when I, because I will go through this with staff and you know, get their input on it, uh, as well as double checking it up against uh, the, the appendix. And um, we'll bring that, um, you know, hopefully, by the end of next week, would be able to uh, to bring that back to the CAC. Thank you, Tom. Excellent. Well, let us go back to um, the agenda. And is there anything else on the reporting before we move ahead? Seeing none. Um, next, we'll move to discussion of scheduling a regular recurring joint meeting to review our five-year plan. Um, uh, who wants to take the lead on that? Joe or Tom? I'm not sure. Who wants to jump into that? I can. <laughs> um, it's probably easier since I'm in the room as well, unless you had anything specific you wanted to say. No, I was I just going to say that for, for most of this, I was prepared to defer to the CAC because this, this is their proposal. 
Right. In essence. Yeah, um, and this is something that Tom had also mentioned at the last board meeting, but there are two uh, per state statute for the districts. There's a requirement of two joint board and CAC meetings a year. Historically, one has always been devoted to reviewing the budget together, and there's never been a, a recurring planned uh, focus for the second meeting. So this could be a potential opportunity to just have a fixed uh, recurring annual meeting where the CAC and the board can meet somewhere towards the beginning of the year at their first available convenience for reviewing this process. Um, as it shows later in the agenda, there could also be elements of strategic planning involved, but at the very least, just having a joint review of the, the plan and then the potential for updates or at least uh, a renewed focus each year on setting goals you know, for the following year and making sure that we're all aligned with the plan's content. And so the idea is that we have a sort of a, an, an evergreen plan that instead of doing five years and then five years and five years, just every, we just essentially continuously revise it each year for a five-year window. Is that? I think that's more of the item of point B of the agenda or item 2B. This one is more just about the plan to meet to review it um, at all. So no matter what that discussion entails, just to, to sit down and review the plan together. Oh, okay. I guess I saw them as kind of together as sort of the same thing, but I, I see what you mean. I will note um, also in the five-year management plan, the very last section under implementation, surveillance, and enforcement, the last sentence says the board of directors and the citizen advisory committee will review and assess the implementation of the plan on an annual basis. So it would also be an, an implementation evaluation opportunity as well. So not just necessarily reviewing the plan and its contents, but also how the implementation is going. Right. Yeah, I think it makes perfect sense to have a joint meeting maybe in February of each year. So the appointments from the various uh, government entities that are solidified, so I wouldn't have it in January. Um, but in February to review five-year plan. Um, anybody else have thoughts one way or the other? I'm good with it. Go ahead, Jeff. I'm fine with it. I was just going to just to throw and this, uh, you know, the, the idea of the, an annual recurring meeting to review things and progress and stuff is, uh, it is one thing, and there's no, you know, no issues at all with that. Like I said at the meeting, I'd, I'd love to have that known schedule for the joint meetings uh, going into every year. Uh, but one thing I'm seeking clarification on from item is um, if, if we make changes to the plan, there is uh, uh, item we're required to submit uh, the, a plan once it's adopted uh, to item um, and. I, I don't know why they would have an objection, but I don't know that they're necessarily anticipating a district submitting a new plan every year. Um, so trying to trying to get some feedback from them on uh, what their you know expectations or what their response might be if we were you know viewing this as a living document that was continuously being updated uh, and possibly resubmitted uh, on an annual or uh, biannual basis. Okay. So you've already reached out to get that, to get feedback from item? Yes. And, and as usual, the person I contact, it has to go to somebody else and it's working its way to where it needs to go. Okay. Okay, um, so I, I... Because I don't hear any objections, I think everybody is on board with an annual joint meeting review five-year plan. Uh, Joe, do you want to move on to parts B and C? Oh, sure. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that part. Let's see. So part the first, just part two, is just about having a recurring joint meeting, which sounds good and can't be arranged right now given the circumstances. But um, the next part is discussing strategic planning as a part of the recurring meeting. Um, I 
I think there's value to that, um, not only just to review the plan and make sure it aligned with it, and also to make sure that the last year's implementation went well, but just to set targets for the given year. I know that at our joint meeting last year, we had talked about things that we wanted to prioritize, but didn't really associate any timelines with any of them within the span of the year or set any, um, I don't want to say hard goals, but just real definitive objectives to achieve during that period. We just talked about maybe what to start a focus on. And I think that if we if we put just a small amount of time into more of a strategic plan and getting a feel for the capacity of the district and staff and um, what we might be able to accomplish in a given year, then to try to correct those more specifically and to try to make sure that we're keeping on a timeline where the, the given goals and objectives can be achieved in the window that we've set for them. So just a proposal to include that as an element of our recurring joint meeting, knowing that we would be having one. Makes total sense to me. I mean, don't want to just review and then not follow that up with um, action items, you know, for the year. Any other feedback on on this 2A to incorporate strategic planning into that annual meeting? Especially if we don't move to, you know, updating the five year plan every year, I think it really makes sense to look at what we expect to accomplish in any given year. Okay, I think we have agreement on that one. <laughs> I think that sounds good. Um, so I guess, yeah, the one that's probably, let's see. Okay, yeah, so a, a little bit less involved consideration. So for, for item two, part B, would just be making updates to the plan relative to what has changed in the environment since the plan was written. So a couple of examples are, um, it lists the board of directors uh, who were um, appointed at the time that the plan was made, same citizens advisory committee members. Um, and then additionally, things like the accepting of waste tires was listed as a, one of the problems in the plan, but the district now accepts them. So that changes what was written when the plan was adopted. It doesn't really change anything about what the district will be doing in the future, but could be updated to reflect the current state of events. So I don't know if that's something that um, for your last remark, Tom, would need to be submitted to item as well, since it would be a change to the plan, but it's more of a change to um, the, the report part of the plan than the actual actions part of the plan. I yeah, and again, that's you know just something I'm waiting for feedback on from item. Um, but I, and it's I, you know I, th I think what it's going to boil down to is that if 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 we physically change the plan, you know if we eliminate a certain section of it or add anything to it, that that's what item's going to be, you know, uh, looking at, and then does it something that has to be submitted under the statute. Um, whereas if we just amongst ourselves say that this is no longer a priority because we're now accepting waste tires or, or whatever, and that doesn't, you know, we don't make any physical change to the plan, that's irrelevant to item. I, I guess, uh, I mean, my thought is it, if we go with, uh, with item C, then this becomes kind of moot because we're going to be revising it anyway. I guess I don't I, I don't necessarily think we should be revising the plan every time something in the environment changes. But if we do have a, a regular revision cadence, even if it's annually, then those changes in the environment, statutory environment, services provided by the district, et cetera, et cetera could be incorporated into the 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 newest edition. But I wouldn't think we'd want to want to be doing more than one one a year. The, the cadence is currently five years. I mean, it, it, it's a five year plan, and that's uh, what most every district across the state adopted was a, a five year window. 
Um, and so that's what, what item is looking for our next update to come in 2026, I think, because September 21 was when this one was adopted. I guess I'm saying I like the idea of a rolling five-year plan updated annually. But I'm also saying that I, I don't think we want to update it more than one and more than annually anytime okay. something changes. Looks like item C and B are related. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, that's what I'm saying. I'll add the description. Item item B is like a a half step to item C in terms of in both cases it would be reviewed annually annually and um yeah, I guess in the broad sense, changes would be made, but the difference between B and C is that B would only be um, not, not, not a change to any of the projected goals, plans, or forecasts in the future. It would just be to rectify anything that has changed with the descriptions of the items that have been listed for the past. So I can use an example. Um, like the transfer stations, for instance, is going to change in the near future with the arrival of Rumpke. So that would be a change that would make the plan no longer completely accurate in the way that it's written, but it wouldn't change anything about the way the district is doing anything or what it hopes to achieve. So that's part B. Part C is we actually think about what we want to do for the next five years and change those things based on how we feel about how they're going or how we value them. So that would be a more substantial change to actually changing the objectives of the plan or something like the mission statement of the district. Those would be those would be significant changes if we were to do a five year rolling version, whereas in, in the, the part B version, it would just be making updates relative to the descriptions um, not related to the district's plans. If that does that help clarify why they're separated or if, if they should be discussed, discussed separately even. Yes. And, and I I don't see the I don't see that B is worthwhile. Right? Hmm. I mean, making changes every year based on okay, now we have this program, now this facility is open. I mean, it, if it doesn't change our actions and our goals, I don't see that it's important to put it in the plan. I mean, it just takes time. We could have a running document, you know, Tom could have, you know, an annotated version so that next time we do it, we're, we have those things. But um, I guess I don't see the benefit of doing the changes as circumstances change if we're not going to actually revise our goals. Does that make sense? It does. Yes. When, when I suggested and it's not what I called it, but that's what it became. My, my idea was like in our households or in our jobs or business, we have goals that we outlined that we want to accomplish. And this is going to take this long, this is going to take this long, this is going to take this long. And as we complete those goals, they're completed. They don't need to be in the plan anymore. And that gives room for down the road five years from now, we can have what we're looking at further down. Um, so it's just kind of really, I guess it's a five year plan, not a one, two, three, and four year plan. So we always have a fifth year out there somewhere that. We may get to that, we may not get to that. If nothing changes from our five year, we don't want to add more to it. But that was where my brain was when I was thinking this. Just, you know, uh, it's, it sets goals and as things are accomplished, we show some accomplishment now that we're removed. So we have room for uh, something better that, that might come along that we hadn't thought of today. Yeah, I understand. Um, that makes sense, Tom. Uh, yeah, I just I need to interject here. Just it, uh, it is five fifty five. Uh, the CAC meeting was advertised to start at six o'clock. Um, we don't necessarily need to start right at six, but we need to be you know close to that. Um, and I just 
I would, would add into that that given the, the circumstances for this meeting and the lack of a quorum of the board president, this not counting um, as, as one of our joint meetings, uh, you know, that uh, we could still, you know, even if we start today, still do a, a, a complete and uh, thorough review of the plan uh, at a future joint meeting when we can get a quorum of the board present. So, so I'm sorry. So are you suggesting we just wrap up and do the actual point three in our agenda at another time? Well, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm saying in, in the interest, I mean, you're, you're we're not going to have time to do a, a thorough review of the of the plan and, and allow the CAC meeting to start, you know, within an acceptable window of what was advertised. Um, and we're going to have to we're going to still have to do two joint meetings, um, have a quorum of the board present to satisfy our joint meeting requirement. So, uh, you know, a, a, a thorough and, and, and adequate review of, of that plan uh, could, could still occur at a future joint meeting, hopefully in the near future, if you know, if we can get a time scheduled. Okay, I understand. Yeah, so I wonder if we could, um, in our last few minutes here, uh, wrap up a discussion of the idea of a rolling plan model and then we can schedule another joint meeting for the actual review um, item three on the agenda. Okay. So um, as far as, well, item B is still relevant to item C. I guess we haven't totally finished with that. But what are what are people's thoughts on, um, on doing a rolling plan model where, uh, like Paul said, where every year we would kind of um, take out the goals that we already accomplished and perhaps add more goals for what we see uh, in five years time. Thoughts? I, I like the rolling, uh, uh, the rolling plan idea. I mean, it, it's a little bit like the way that the MPO works, although they do it every two years, but you, the the span of the um, transportation improvement program is is four years typically, um, but it's 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 a rolling four years uh, that's updated every two years, and I think that that gives an uh, it gives the opportunity to always, you know, to to always be planning, which is pretty much what we should be doing: always planning and always evaluating against the plan. I'm in favor of it as well because I think it will help us to achieve the actual goal that for the five year. So if we're if we have a five year goal of being here on composting and we get to year three, we're updating it, we're able to shift our priorities to put more emphasis, make sure that we're hitting the goals of the long term, um, what we call the big rock. We're not worried about the little pebbles. We want to work those in, but the big goals overall, if we're constantly updating our plan annually to make sure we're getting those big goals easier. Yeah, I was just just going to say again, uh, you know, waiting on a response from item on, you know, what physically updating the plan means to them, but, uh, you know, absent of that, or even, you know, outside of that, you know, I think that the, the, the district via direction of the board you know, can deviate from the adopted plan without actually making a change to the plan. You know, we can decide to prioritize one thing over another or, you know, pick something that's not even addressed in the plan and decide we want to address that because it needs addressed uh, and do that without physically updating the plan if, you know, if that's something that, you know, item's going to balk at us doing, an, uh, you know, an annual update to it and submission of it. So... Well, can't we internally update every year and just send it to item every five years? I mean, <laughs> well, and, that's, right. and that's, that's kind of what I'm saying. As long as we yeah. don't present a revised plan under a resolution to the board for them to adopt, there's nothing to submit to item. But once we adopt a plan, the statute says it has to be submitted to item. Uh, okay. So it's a, a, a question of the level of official action. It's it's a, yeah it's, it's semantics. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's interesting. 
Well, does anybody think it's uh, preferable to stick with five-year increments? No. I will say I do have mixed feelings. I see the interests of either. I think what I like about a fixed five-year window is that it doesn't change your goalposts. So if you are, um, yeah, I guess if you're running behind, it, it's an incentive to catch up and to not just kick things further down the road and say, we'll schedule this goal out for later because we're not doing a great job of it. We set a five-year window and we lost a lot of time in year one. I'd like to make sure we're sticking to trying to get that thing done by five years. I mean, I absolutely see how if we were to make revisions, we could also focus that accordingly. I just feel like the tendency would most likely be to just let things extend if we're updating it every year and we're not hitting goals every year. I feel like that's what would more likely end up happening. That's that's my, my main reservation about doing it that way. And one thing I like about the five-year plan is we can see more of a lump sum at the end, maybe like how much of it did we not achieve at the end of five years? It gives just a little bit more clarity and perspective on that whole period, whereas a rolling period makes those things less clear, I think, if they're constantly shifting a little bit over time. That's my first one. Yeah, thank you. Penny? Um, I'd rather stick with a five-year plan, but one that has annual goals written into it so that um, we know what we expect to achieve by the end of the first year, the second year, third year, so that we can uh, measure against that. Yeah, I um, I actually also prefer a five-year plan that is not um, revised every year for just the reasons that, um, that Joe specified, is that I, I fear that uh, we would just push our goals down the road if we evaluate every year and say, okay, well, didn't quite get this done. We want to get this done. All right, well, let's do it in the next year. And uh, I think it, it just gets, it muddies the waters as far as progress towards goals. Um, and, and I also like Penny's idea of, uh, you know, having, uh, and we do have uh, big yearly goals uh, in some categories, but not in others. Um, so to have more clear yearly goals as part of our plan is as well. Well, I'm used to um, sorts of things where you have goals and objectives that are a little bit, and they're, they're slightly different, so that your big goal is supported by that, the breakdown of the objectives, so that that big goal you're, you're stepping towards all the time. But that, that, that gives you those metrics for measuring it on, on an annual basis. So a different structure in other plans that you've worked with is that what you're referring to? I'm sorry, it's hard to understand sometimes with over Zoom. What did you say again? Oh, um, so you're saying that um, other plans you've worked with had a different structure, so that objectives kind of added up to uh, accomplish bigger goals? Yes. That, yeah. Yeah, I, I see that in, in city documents as well, that their overall goals and then uh, more actionable objectives. But, you know, the next five year plan, maybe we can structure it that way. Um, but I see we're almost at 605. So I wonder if we should wrap up. I mean, we can't make a vote today anyway, since we don't have a quorum of board members. Um, so maybe, and, and hopefully we can have more board members participate at the next joint meeting as well and get their feedback on this idea of rolling plan versus five-year plan, and then actually delve into how we are doing on our existing goals. Does that sound okay with everybody if we do that mm -hmm. next meeting? Yeah. Which hopefully we can schedule within the next month so we don't get too behind. It's, I, I support that. Yep. I think that with what we've been working on with the uh, Stuff we were looking at first that will help a great deal in um, in uh, accomplishing the goals that we set and seeing where we need to go Absolutely. annually at a minimum. Yeah, and thank you again for working on that, everybody here in the CSC. <laughs> All right, well, 
Shall we go ahead and, and adjourn and then we'll hear from Tom about scheduling another meeting. Tom, yes. I just, uh, uh, just point of information uh, for uh, those attending on Zoom uh, for CATS. Uh, when this meeting adjourns uh, for the Zoom link, we will jump over to the normal CAC uh, Zoom meeting link. Um, so, Ms. Githens, Mr. McKim, if you're interested in attending that, I will email that to you here shortly. Um, but uh, for the purposes of consistency with the CAC meetings, we will jump over to their normal recurring Zoom link. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.